whenever you see scale appearing on your orchids or for example you get this feeling in the pit of your stomach a feeling of trepidation or whatever it is i hope that this video after you've finished watching it will dispel all of that will debunk all the fear of scale and you will feel armed and ready to combat what is always deemed as the pest of pests and know that if you are dealing with scale all the other pests are just a breeze thank you very very much for joining me on this video i appreciate your time and your interest in this subject matter and i hope i'm going to do it justice if I don't have the footage that I will be talking about. We have Rinkulalia Digbiana keeping us company. Unfortunately, just now when I brought her out to the great outdoors for filming, I ripped the lip. But I think she's still pretty. She's much nicer company than just a plain hedge. Anyway, let's get to battle with the scale and deal with them once and for all. And there's one thing that's working in our advantage when it comes to scale. They have a very, very short life cycle. And there's always the question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Which is also very difficult to answer especially when it comes to scale, because if the orchid was clean before, why on earth is there scale suddenly on an orchid? Well, the crawlers, I would say, are the biggest, quickest main culprits that will go for a clean orchid because they will just come in on a breeze and light and tiny as they are and settle in. They may also come from another orchid where there was an outbreak that has not yet been identified. So that would be the crawler stage. The crawlers had previously hatched from eggs somewhere else, maybe not even on your orchid, but they hatched from within the body of the female protected by the outer hard shell. Once the female dies, the crawlers hatch and they will find a suitable place to start using our orchids as a buffet and develop into the next stage of their cycle. So the baby crawlers, the females will begin to form the hard protective outer shell, which will continue to harden as the female matures. The males, no pun intended here but the males are usually only around to mate and then die so we don't even have to worry about them <clears throat> sorry trying to stay serious here <laughs> but the subject is not serious knowing how quickly these little blighters form and how the male dies we are already left with only the females to deal with and that is what we're going to take and use to our advantage of course i'm going to say keep a vigilant eye on your orchids inspecting them is 90 percent of you staying ahead of the game the best place is to inspect your orchid for possible scale is where the orchid structures are the softest the crawlers the little blighters that we hardly hardly see will always head for the softest easiest chewable part of the orchid and that would be new growths new structures if you're bringing an orchid in and you think it is clean some of the infestation could be in the media and at that point a total repot and thorough clean of the orchid would be necessary to be able to start the treatment and subsequent prevention with a clean orchid when you're checking the base of the orchid make sure that your focus is on the eyes the growing points on some podial orchids as well as all the new growths even though the eyes may not have moved yet as in started to swell look at your rhizome and look for all the growing points not just the ones in the front but possibly go all the way to the back because there may be another eye swelling there and i find that often we would miss that because we're always checking the front of the orchid scale does not differentiate between the front or the back once you've had a look at the base of the orchid continue to inspect the rest of the orchid by checking the underside of the leaves the crevices between the pseudobulbs and the leaves and definitely on monopodial orchids, really watch the leaf joints and mid rip where it is shady, the underside of the leaf, where it is a little bit more juicy, where they can hide in tight spaces on monopodial orchids. Definitely watch out for where the leaf meets the stem. And worst case scenario, if the entire orchid is protected from preventative products that we have used, be it insecticide or in my case, garlic alcohol, watch out for your spikes and look at the back of the blooms because if all structures are well protected and there is no scale, they will target the juiciest part of the orchid as it develops 
which includes spikes and buds. Now, not trying to scare you, but I'm going to address the effects of not treating scale. And apart from making the plant look ugly, if left unchecked, scale can affect the other orchids. It can also weaken the orchid, leading to the point of the orchid's demise. If you are into growing your orchids and displaying them at shows, it will be absolutely worthless. No one is going to accept an orchid at a show that has some form of pest on it. And then it can also develop secondary infections of sooty mold, but don't worry about the mold. If you treat the scale, you are also treating that mold at the same time and it will disappear. So when we speak of treatment for scale, the best treatment is vigilance and persistence. These two words give you 100% of control of any scale you may start to see on your orchids. The worst thing when it comes to treating scale is complacency. If you get a little bit too comfortable with the circumstances, scale will win. This video, I hope, will bring you out on top. Now you can also use systemic insecticides, direct contact sprays, or a combination of both direct contact, meaning the smothering and suffocating of the scale, the systemic, meaning it goes into the cell structure of the orchid so that when scale does appear and then decides to take a bite out of your orchid, it will subsequently die. However, it will leave a mark. Ideally, we don't even want the scale to get to the point that it settles down to leave a bite mark. The thing with these treatments though is do not use the treatments at the same time. The best practice is to wait a week between using different types of treatment. Bringing me to the point of a top tip here, know your scale. That's why I gave you a little background of when they start as to who dies first. <laughs> and who you're actually dealing with if you have scale on your orchid. Their short life cycle again is our advantage. And we always say prevention is better than cure. Careful though, it can be a downside. Seeing as overusing any systemic pesticide can cultivate scale that becomes immune to the product or products. That is why they say when applying systemic pesticides, it's always recommended to alternate between different products so as to avoid any scale building up resistance. They will not build up resistance with household products. There we have the biggest and best weapon in our arsenal because there is no risk of immunity and that is where prevention comes in and that is much better than cure using household products. Now my personal favorite is garlic infused alcohol. The active repellent here are the essential oils of the garlic that stay on the structures long after the alcohol is evaporated. And it has a time frame of four to six weeks when we speak about prevention. But if you're going to treat for scale, apply every 10 days to counteract any reoccurring cycles of the development stages of the scale. Essential oils of garlic long term repel pests, any pests. And that's why I'm focusing on scale today, because as I mentioned in the beginning, if we get our scale under control, or if we want to prevent even getting scale, spraying your orchid with garlic infused alcohol prevents it over a period of four to six weeks. And when it comes to applications every 10 days, just to keep breaking the cycle of crawler stage to becoming a female to hatching into the next crawler stage. Personally, I swear by that stuff. I do not have any other insecticides in my arsenal. Garlic infused alcohol is the go-to for me. Another top tip that I want to bring to your attention. Those of us in the Northern Hemisphere are heading into a season now where temperatures are rising. So here's the thing, when you're using alcohol, wipe off excess alcohol to avoid the evaporative cooling that happens when the alcohol is too cold on the cells of the structures. This avoids the destruction of the cells, causing the chlorophyll to die, and then other bacteria or fungus can start their own cycle of destruction. The effect of evaporation cools down the cells. And in order to get a good coverage of the essential oils of the garlic, we need, of course, to be spraying liberally and abundantly. But be careful with your outdoor temperatures, be careful with indoor temperatures rising and letting that alcohol evaporate on the cell structure. Let it do its thing, 
on the structure, but then any excess, wipe it off. And then also mist the roots if you have any aerial roots that have come into contact with that alcohol. This really only applies as temperatures warm up. During the winter, it doesn't matter because they're the evaporative cooling and the cool air, they sort of equal each other out. So keep that in mind as temperatures rise. And then to wrap it up and make sure that you are equipped, armed and ready for whatever the season will bring, whatever will come your way, indoor growers, outdoor growers, southern hemisphere growers, northern hemisphere growers, know that dealing with scale infestation requires your patience, diligence and consistency. But it can be done and the day will come when you can say adios to scale on an orchid that had them. It does not mean that they won't return elsewhere, but they will quickly lose their fear factor and the feeling of dread. And when we see them from now on, I hope, because of this video, it switches our trepidation, the pit in our stomach feeling to, I got you, buddy. And that is my hope with this video. Scale has no power over our orchids. It is completely ineffective. It is part of growing the orchid, but we have the upper hand. And I really hope that this video gives you the confidence when you see scale next time, you're gonna get your alcohol, you're gonna go there, and you're just gonna blast him away and say, sayonara, adios. And in 10 days, you do that again, and then no babies even have a chance to continue their cycle. If you have any questions about this video, if you think I'm over the top optimistic, let me tell you that I have had my bouts with scale and now I don't, not so much. I still do get scale, but I treat my orchid for the scale that I see. I do that 10 days later once again, and maybe you can hear the smile in my voice. After that, nothing for many, many, many months. And I hope you will also have that same smile on your face when you see scale and say, <laughs> let me show you the door. <laughs> I really want to thank you for watching this video. I appreciate your time very, very much. I want to wish you a beautiful, beautiful day, just on one condition, though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.